Hello, my SOC universe. It is time for another inductee in my soccer Hall of Fame, and I was going back and forth a lot. I wanted to do another one uh, in the icons category. First one was Ronaldo, and I was thinking about players that, um, you know, I was not immediately a fan of, but then I said, I gotta do Maradona. I simply gotta do Maradona. Maradona never played for a team that I actively supported. But, and I really, really liked Maradona. I never disliked Maradona um, for various reasons. And he fits the icon category in that sense, that just the tag icon. I mean, he is still rightfully regarded as one of the greatest to ever play the game where we put him in the pantheon of greatest players of all time whether he is number one or number five i don't want to get in, 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 in the discussion um this is also fueled by me having watched about a month ago finally the diego maradona movie if you haven't i think it's currently available on amazon prime at least in the german-speaking regions watch it it's uh, focuses mostly on his time at Napoli, uh, which is basically, this is main Maradona, but it also puts the 86 and the 90 World Cups in big focus. This is primetime Maradona and you get an idea of what the madness of, Mar of being Maradona is all about. And I really have, have, have to say, um, you can also see the split personality they call it diego the sensitive guy who is actually fun to be around and the maradona who is kind of shutting everyone out who needs to be in control uh it's kind of um angel and devil you know there was always these two sides about maradona that actually made him way more intriguing than uh say pele i never saw pele play but you always had the feeling that pele is you know he's someone else he seemed so flawless so so perfect and i never say I, I i never had a dislike i mean one of the first uh biographies of soccer players that about if not the first was about pele um but i have to say maradona was way more intriguing always more intriguing and uh becoming a soccer fan right towards the towards the end of his career where it really all where shit really hit the fan made it even more intriguing because everyone knew Maradona, Maradona, Maradona. In fact, the first soccer match that I saw, and my father made me made us watch that, was the 1986 World Cup final. And I don't remember much of the game, to be honest, but what I remember, and this is still the picture that I have in mind, uh, Maradona holding up the World Cup, kissing it and then being carried across the field this is a lasting image that i have from that game i especially him taking the cup and kissing it and actually i couldn't really find that footage and i was so happy that i saw exactly that footage in the maradona movie and i really have to say this was a total flashback uh maradona is one of the most intriguing figures he is by the teams that he played for his seen as a god he was also condemned by many for a long time and yes uh he has many flaws and that makes him so intriguing before we get deeper into uh diego maradona as a player and some stories i think with mama maradona i can actually share quite a few personal stories i will go briefly through his career and so on um for the first time I decided to change a the background because I was really back going back and forth which jersey should I wear for this one. I don't have a jersey of when Maradona was playing. I would love to have the Napoli jersey with Mars written over it. Um, I, that is one of my fav favorite jerseys. The Napoli jersey, I decided to put it up there. It's hanging over the Burkina Faso jersey, but I thought uh, any Maradona video should have Napoli in there. I didn't want to take the Cameroon and the Nigeria jerseys away because those two nations have a um, 
kind of a role in Maradona's late career, at least as how I perceived them. And then I decided, okay, it's got to be an Argentina jersey, although I have been trying to avoid wearing national team jerseys uh, for these players. But this 2008-9 jersey is one that the Maradona actually was the coach of the Argentina national team, more of that a little, a little bit later. And to be honest, the number 10 here, and it has the same number 10 on the back, slightly to Maradona. Uh, it's maybe the first story I want to tell you. When my brother was about to become first time father, uh, they were of course discussing the name and uh, they were going back and forth and um, they eventually decided that his first name is Diego and then um, my, uh, my brother said, well, if he if he's called Diego, then uh, his middle name has to be Lionel because my brother's a big Barcelona fan. At roughly around the same time, and it was World Soccer Shop, the I was living in America, they had a sale of this more Argentina jersey, and since it has a big um, shield on, on the back to put the number, I said, yeah, there's only one number you can put on an Argentina jersey, and that's number 10. Um, but I then decided, yeah, because of my uh, not called nephew, Diego Lionel, I want to keep it without a name. I want to keep it without a name and just put the number 10. The only thing I did not like is when I got it, I picked even put the authentic printing and that's the authentic printing for the 2010 11. So this is not the right style of print, but hey, it's still number 10. It's rightly applied here on the side and after number 10 on the back. So, so be it. So yeah, he was the coach of the Argentina na national team, but let's um talk about the player first because it's um what it is a coach is not really of um uh not really worth mentioning he grew up of course in argentina in a impoverished uh suburb of uh buenos aires um his talent became quickly known and I really watched the movie there. It is so wonderful done that Argentinos Juniors uh, picked him up in 76 as I think at the age of 16, if not uh, uh, sooner. Yeah, 12 year, uh, 12 year old, I'd say so Wikipedia, he was already entertaining people. And so uh, they picked up and they were kind of known for their youth program. Then he, in 81, he changed to Boca Juniors. In the meantime, he led Argentina and always have, have in mind there was a huge military regime in Argentina at the time uh, to the, I think, to the Youth World Cup um, because he was not uh, selected for the 1978 World Cup, although he probably could have made the squad back then. He was born, of course, in on 3rd of October 1960. So um, at that time, he would, would have been 18 years old, playing the Youth World Cup. I think, as far as I know, they won that one. Uh, so yeah, that was kind of the big downturn. In 81, he, man he manages to go to Boca. And to me, uh, other than Napoli, Maradona to me is synonymous with Boca. Uh, hence me actually... To be honest, I actually like uh, Boca is probably my team in or Argentina. Not that I have really big, but you know, for me, Boca equals Mar Maradona, and therefore Boca goes there. And of course, he was a star there. He he won with them a championship, but of course, um, at the 1982 World Cup, he was now called on. And this is something that I I I remember we were discussing in school when we went through World, World Cup history at the 1982 World Cup. There is Maradona, there's Mario Campos playing the same team. How did that team not win? Well, they were not even all that huge fav favorites uh, there. And it was not a good World Cup for Ar Ar Argentina by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, he played already, had already signed a contract for Barcelona at that time. So he, the Barcelonese could uh, see him. But the World Cup ended with a red card for him when he kicked, uh, I think, a Brazilian player in the nether regions and was rightfully sad of after being of course kicked around this is the one thing with Maradona since he had such tight great ball control many only knew one way 
to stop him and that is kick him, kick him, kick him, kick him. And even that was hard because with his low center of gravity, and uh, that's the fun funny thing, he didn't need to be the greatest athlete, although in his prime he, he was a great, he was a really good athlete. Uh, with his low center of gravity, you barely could stop him. I mean, uh, in that movie you see many scenes where he is tripped up, but he's not falling and he can't go on. He signed to Barcelona from Boca for a world record fee of 7.6 million dollars. Now, let that number, that was in 1982, the world record fee, 7.6 million dollars. Unbelievable now. I mean, who do you get for 7, 7, 7, 7 million? He will probably do, no, he will not even break the Austrian league record. That's how crazy um, it all went. Signed for Barcelona, but um, his time at Barcelona was not the greatest. Um, he started to take cocaine there, of course. Uh, he got injured um, uh, early on in his career, so that was a factor. And I think the moment at Barcelona that is most remembered is the riot. That was probably the thing that ended his career, where he basically had a big uh, kickabout against uh, at the Spanish Cup final against Bilbao, a mass brawl in front of the uh, Spanish king did not really help his uh, rep reputation. I am not sure he won much with Barcelona because Barcelona was not that juggernaut back then. I think he won probably a, a Spanish cup. Uh, let me see. A Spanish cup, a league cup and a super cup, but in 83, all, all, all of that. So really not that outstanding he still was a hot property and I have to say the uh, co uh, one of the coaches there was uh, Udo Lattek, that doesn't help, I mean a German coach um, who wants to control Mar Mar Maradona uh, definitely was not the greatest. So in 84 Barcelona was kind of ready to sell him but who would get him, who got him was Napoli and the transfer is still one of the craziest things where Napoli actually couldn't afford him and it said that um, people in Naples made donations. He joined not. Barcelona is a huge club. Even back then, even though they were not winning, Barcelona was always a huge club. Napoli was a nobody. An absolute nobody. They had probably in the 60s uh, uh, period where they probably could have won a title, but they have. that was a nobody team. However, that team in that city adored uh, Maradona and you know they said that um, people were donating money to that the, the team Ferlaino can afford uh, Maradona and it was also a big move for, for Naples because the city was always, always in the shadow and this is a big part of the story, it's the north-south divide in Italy, that Diego Maradona joined the south. He did not rejoin the rich clubs from um, Turin or Milan or even Roma. No. He went into the shithole of Naples and was adored for them. Uh, for that and uh, many many immediately um, saw him as the savior of the city. His first two seasons were so and so. I mean, uh, Napoli was a struggling team. Uh, and he did probably enough to keep them up, but you see already that they were absolutely, I mean, his, they were absolutely trying to hack him down as much as they can. But maybe the best known scene from his early years is his welcome in Naples. And this is also where the whole um, movie starts. It's just amazing. This is. I don't think this was uh, the normal procedure back then. Superstar is coming, the stadium is full, he makes the kick about now, ev everyone does, does it, but this this is kind of the scene. Maradona arrives and Maradona leaves Napoli and I think already in his second year they were um, competitive. Not a great team, but they were competitive. Um, also because the, uh, the uh, boss Ferlaino uh, invested heavily around that team. So it uh, has also to be said that um, with the team that they had when Mara Madan arrived, he could have not done anything. And then as it happens, um, 
the 86 World Cup rolls around uh, after two years um, and what shall I say Argentina was not the f were not the favorites for that World Cup I think uh, other nations were far more favored but he showed his class already in a game against Italy um, against players that he knew very, very well and I, th I know they played against Uruguay in the next round so they won the group uh, which was already a surprise and then the big clash against England where it has to be said England were at war with Argentina or just finished the Falklands war uh, there so there was huge animosity between the two uh, nations and Maradona in that game makes the two signature moments of his career. I think if you want to sum up uh, Maradona with two goals it's oh, in one game, take that England game. The first goal is the famous hand of God goal where he just sneakily jumps up and pushes the ball with the hand past Peter Shilton into the goal and no one sees it. He's celebrating and um, he admitted years later, I mean first, first he said it was not uh, it was the head of Maradona and the hand of God that pulled the pull, 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 pull in there. But he, he admitted the best thing it is he sold it to the referee. He kept the doubt there. Uh, he, he kept no doubt that he thought it was a legitimate goal and he was celebrating. Uh, gamesmanship in Peter's form. And then what come, came after? Uh, <laughs> uh, that goal, the goal of the century. Uh, I still think the best goal given ever scored, given the weight of the match, that goal where he gets the ball in his own half and there was past six defenders, uh, six England players, unbefreaking livable. Uh, Messi called over it, but it was a Copa del Rey game against Getafe. So to me, Maradona still will take the prize for best goal ever scored. Uh, it just was him in his irresistible form. He made two similar, uh, him, 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 he made two other great goals against Belgium in the semis and then in the final against Germany he played against his, I don't want to say nemesis, but Matthäus and Maradona shared a certain kinship. Uh, one dominated the 86 World Cup, the other one would dominate the 1990 World Cup. Matthäus was responsible for uh, keeping Maradona calm and for the most of the final he kept calm. And just when Germany was storming back from a 2 0 deficit, there was one moment of genius. Maradona, his golden foot, puts it to Burburu Chaga, who makes it 3 2 and Argentina are world champions. And on that high, he returns to Naples. And what follows is the incredible 86-87 season that it will never be forgotten enough in Naples. He leads him to the first Serie A title. Unheard and more or less by himself. Yes, he had a good supporting cast, but more or less by himself. And if his career at Naples would have ended there, that would have been it. Now, he prob they probably should have won next year too. There, are, there was a great match between uh, Napoli and Milan, where Milan won 3-2. Uh, but I think they had a huge lead late, late in the game and they didn't manage to win. And there's already the collusion that maybe uh, the uh, Mafia of uh, Naples, I think in the Rangetta, had something to do with that, that suddenly they were betting that uh, now Napoli will not no become champions and kind of fix it so that Milan would become champions. And while that started a huge Milan legend, it kind of makes, gives me a sour note for that cha championship because without the championship, the great Milan team, the Invincibles, would not exist. So now let's twist and turn. Yes, the Mafia was very much interest in Maradona from the beginning when he arrived in Naples. Uh, there were many denials but we know now that he was partying with the Mafia boss and, and, and so on and he, the Mafia boss kept him under check because he knew that he, he gave him women, he gave him drugs and Maradona in this high pressure environment 
I think it all exploded once he became Italian champions, but then everyone uh, wanted more. And that became too much pressure on one man. Uh, holding the entire city and in this eternal north-south divide, it's just too much. He won it out, but the president didn't let him go. He led them to a UEFA Cup uh, in 89. He led them to another championship in 90, right in the run-up for the World Cup in Italy. And here's where Camp Cameron come, 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 comes, comes in. Uh, Argentina's world champion were, of course, playing in Naples. However, Italy wanted to have the opening game in Milan. What gives, of course, Argentina have to be moved for the first game to Milan. The open against Cameron. And I actually saw yesterday Maradona posted because this happened uh, just 30 years ago. Highlights of the game where uh, he, he says, yeah, FIFA invented fair, fair play. Um, they were fouled left and right by Cameron. Cameron got the famous win with a stupid goal. Um, but even whenever you see Maradona touch that ball, there is a certain magic to him that is unbelievable. But what's started here is that Maradona was seen as Napoli. And the North hates the South. So he was cheered and whistled. Or Argentina was cheered and whistled for the entire tournament whenever they played outside of Naples. Uh, especially in that game and everyone suddenly was cheering for Cameroon, which, which Maradona, of course, said, for once, we, I cured them all. They're not racist anymore. They just hate me. So there you go. Uh... As I said, I watched some high, uh, I, I watched eight minute highlights that he posted on his Facebook profile, and it's. I still have to say, every time you see Maradona touch the ball, you see something special could happen. There is just something, uh, an intangible about him that I don't think there are many other players, even in today's games. Yes, he got, he got more space, but you can actually see the brilliance on him. He was super fit for that World Cup competition. Uh, with that loss, Argentina was in a tough position. They managed only to, in third place to squeak past the group stage as a third place team. Then they play Brazil and Brazil for the first time have been disappointing. For the first time to let go, play like Brazil, have many chances. And Maradona again with his magic foot to Canija decides the game completely undeserved win but a typically must have felt great win for Maradona over Brazil uh, on a day that is probably the, the biggest uh, round of 16 day in World Cup history because we had the same day um, Argentina playing Brazil and Germany playing take taking all the Netherlands so they you had four pre-tournament favorites basically face, face, face facing each other in one day um, and fun, fun enough the two winners would actually meet them in, in, in the final but we're not quite there in Yugoslavia was playing it against Florence he missed in the penalty shootout everyone was cheering Argentina manages thanks to Goyko to move on and then comes and that's the other defining game in Maradona's career and to this day if I think about it to me given the weight of the matter this is the biggest match in World Cup history. Bar none, the biggest match in World Cup history. There has never been a match in the entire history where the host nation is taking on the reigning world champions and the reigning world champions seemingly have an edge. Where Maradona reminds his fellow ne Neapolitans, you know, the whole year they're cheering against you. And now for that one game, you want them, uh, they want you to cheer to their own. I'm here the entire year for you. The entire year. Please support our, our Argentina. We'll need it. It has to be said that Argentina squad, the one in 80, 80, 86, was maybe not the greatest Argentina squad, but it had Maradona in top form and had a few good supporting players. The one in um, 90, there was Burujaga, there was Kanija, there was Maradona, 
Nils Goicoche in goal. The rest, it was a horrible Argentina team. But it was enough to make the public in Naples a little bit unsure about who to cheer on. And it was not, he, he was not cheered. Uh, cheered. So they didn't whistle him. And they were still largely in for Italy, but Italy kind of felt this is different. This is absolutely diff uh, di 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 different. Although they took, took the lead, they conceded for the first time a rather soft goal. And Maradona in a penalty shootout converts the decisive penalty and celebrates. And at this moment, the relationship between Italy and Maradona fell apart. There is no doubt, 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 doubt in my mind. This was the decisive moment. They moved on the World Cup final. They had injuries. They had suspensions. There was only Maradona there. They had no chance of winning that final. No, absolutely no, no chance. And probably the ugliest final, although 2010 is a close contender in World Cup history. Uh, if Germany only won 1 0, they probably should have won much, much higher. This was no con contest, and everyone in the stadium did not want to see Argentina win. I wanted to see Argentina win. Four years earlier, when I was watched my first so so soccer match, I hate to admit it, but I wanted Germany to win because it's the only thing I saw. And then there were the players we had, you know, we bought those Duplo bars and they had the stickers of the German national team. And there was a sticker book that I was collecting, so I knew the German players. And my father had to explain in excruciating detail how I should hate the Germans as being Austrians. Um, four years later, that was not need needed any anymore. My schoolmates straightened me out right there. We don't like the Germans. Well, that's another story. Germany should, should have won that one. Uh, he played one more season for Naples, but he lost the protection from the Mafia. He was quickly found out to uh, call girls, drugs, whatever. He had to flee Naples from one moment to, 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 to another. Joined, uh, he failed a drug test, of course, and that's basically, basically it. He joined then um, uh, Sevilla where he stayed for a year, but it was kind of so-and-so. Then he went to Argentina, played for New York's old boys. And surprisingly, although he had retired from the national team, he comes back in the playoffs against Australia and helps them get to the World Cup in 94. And that's when I was then really aware. I mean, I was aware of, Mar of Maradona, but Argentina started out the tournament in great shape. You we had Batistuta on front, we had Maradona, and I remember Maradona's goal against Greece was a great goal. This was not the Maradona who was wiggling through all the defenders, but he still had this accuracy. He puts it into the net and he celebrates with an expression that you will never see. I mean, not unlike Maradona, to be honest, but it was clear there was something uh, wrong. Then they play Nigeria, who had a great showing against... Um, uh, Bulgaria, hence why there's uh, Nigeria now. Nigeria even takes a uh, early lead, but Maradona inspires uh, Ar Argentina to a 2 1 win, and Argentina look as one of the big favorites for the tournament suddenly. And then the nurse carries him off to the drug test. Of course, he was randomly chosen, and yeah, he's found out to have taken a cocktail of forbidden substances. He's banned from the tournament. Argentina exits in a great game against Romania. Of course, they're shocked they're without their leader. The game against Romania was probably the best 90 minutes of the tournament. But it was Haji, not Mar Maradona, did uh, uh, that game. And he's crying there. His career basically uh, done. But not for me, because, well, that, that's a funny personal story. Uh, I think it was in 95, I want to say 95, Alaska, the new pre pre president, and his friend won in the American lottery. It was called a, a La Lucky John, had lots of money. And their idea was, let's get Maradona for a few games to play for Lusk. They were in Buenos Aires, of course, they never talked to Maradona, although his brother played for Rapid. In, uh, after the 90 World, World Cup. 
it's crazy to say this these days, but there were really daily newspaper articles about how Lusk is trying to get Maradona to play in Linz. We were all crazy about Mar Maradona for just a couple, couple of weeks until, of course, it fell apart. I mean, we were naive back then. He did though play in Munich a few years later, 2000, for the final game uh, of Lothar Matthäus. Uh, right before Euro 2000, where Lothar Matthäus would make his last few games and there was a Bayern against um, uh, German national team uh, match and the big attraction was not Lothar Matthäus, the big attraction was he got Maradona to play there. Uh, first he faked the press conference with the Maradona double, who was unfortunately too thin and spoke too well English. Uh, but he showed up there and played for, 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 for a while and I, I remember he had a Bayern shirt on and he looked like a humongous balloon playing on the pitch. But every time he touched the ball, he could give it the right away. And I have another great picture where he's actually, this was 84, 80, 85, something some, some there where he's playing against Udine, Zico, at, at, at the kick of an Ikasi Maradona, clearly not in shape. He's around, but he still is a genius. You could see it on that night. Whenever he touched the ball, he was a genius and he was the big attraction of that game. Uh, a few years later, he seemingly was about to die young and so on. But I guess to capture those later years, I again go to this book, Soccer Man, and read to you the first of two chapters of Maradona in there. And then we'll end it there. Diego Maradona, this was written September 2008. Of course, Argentina shouldn't have let Diego Maradona coach his soccer team. He won't last long in the post. He has enough trouble getting out of bed, let alone showing up in Glasgow for Scotland Argentina on November 19. The fat cigar smoker and former cocaine addict with uh, the geriatrics heart may not even be around for the next World Cup. But all this misses the point. A national team doesn't exist only to win, it also represents the nation. And nobody in soccer incarnates his country and its fans like Maradona does. That is part of his genius. Here are some scenes from his life and from two recent films about him which explain why Argentina had to give him the job. Mexico City, 1986. After his two legendary goals uh, have knocked out England out of the World Cup, Maradona's teammates sit joking in the locker room. The striker Jorge Valdano teases him. While Maradona was dribbling past six Englishmen, Valdano was wrong, running alongside him, calling for the ball. Why didn't Maradona pass? Yes, replies Maradona, I was watching you. And kept, pass, and kept meaning to pass, but the English kept get, getting in the way. And suddenly I'd beaten them all, so I just scored. Valdano is odd. While you scored these goals, you were also watching me. Old man, you insult me. It isn't possible. And a midfielder Hector Enrique calls from the showers. Lots of praise for the goal, but after that pass I gave him, if he hadn't scored, he should have been killed. Everyone laughs. As Maradona notes, Enrique had shoved the ball into his feet in their own half. It is a characteristic Maradona scene. Though he towered over his teammates, he always felt one with the team. When I asked Valdano if he liked Maradona, he replied, I love Maradona. I'm from the country of Maradona. Buenos Aires, 2004. Maradona lies in intensive care. His heart is failing. Argentines gather us out the outside the hospital doors. They expect him to die young. That is what Argentine tiny heroes do. Eva Perón, Che Guevara, Carlos Gardel, the singer Rodrigo, in a Catholic tradition, the heroes die to redeem the country's sins. Like Evita, Maradona is a sort of Argentine folk saint. In Carlos Sorin's 2006 movie, The Road to San Diego, an illiterate woodcutter decides that a fallen tree in the forest resembles a cheering Maradona. He crafts a thing into a statue of Maradona and carries it across Argentina. Some people he meets laugh at him, noting the statue looks nothing like Maradona, but many gasp its religious, uh, at its religious status. Santa Maradona, as a Brazilian drug driver remarks. In Emil Kusturica's new documentary, Maradona by Kusturica, crowds from um, around, form around Maradona wherever he goes, as if he were an icon in a Catholic procession. It looks exhausting, but Maradona understands the iconography. In his interviews with Kusturica, he wears an outsized silver cross and explains how God saved him in intensive care. Qatar, 2005. Maradona and Pelé appear at the launch of something or other. Afterwards, writer James Montagu, in his book When Friday Comes, the Qatari uh, crowd rushes the stage. Everybody ignores Pelé, Montagu says. 
All I can see in the melee is the top of Diego's unkempt afro, buried in a sea of adoring fans. Augustine Pichot, Argentina's former rugby captain and Maradona's friend, explains that people love Maradona because he's authentic. We feel we know him. He's flawed like us. That's partly because Maradona looks like an ordinary person. Never has a great athlete looked less uh, like a great athlete. In Sorin's film set in poor provincial Argentina, we see rural people with withered with faces on rickety buses, a cheap prostitute, a blind lottery ticket seller, who recognize themselves in the tubby, little former slum dweller. Maradona is the link to greatness. Germany, World Cup 2006. Maradona is here as a fan. He sits in the stands uh, wearing an Argentina replica shirt, chumming rhythmically with the other Argentine supporters. Pelé or Franz Beckenbauer couldn't have done it but Maradona embodies Argentina. Having said that, I was once, and I know that for sure, in the same place as Maradona at the 95 Champions League final. I know Maradona was there, I didn't see him, but I know. And I was probably was close because I was sitting above the stand of honor. So that's how close I came to greatness. <laughs> Cinemas 2008, Kusturica's film is edged prop for Fidel Castro, Hugo Chavez and Emi Kusturica. Yet, it also captures the truth about Maradona Argentina. The player avenges the country's frustrations about its place in the world. The film includes a cartoon version of Maradona's goal versus England, in which he dribbles past Margaret Thatcher, who gets herself decapitated, a handbag wielding Queen Elizabeth, a horned Tony Blair, who bites Maradona's ankle before dropping into the underworld, and a pistol-toting George W. Bush. Kusturica calls the goals one of those rare moments that a country, heavily in debt to the IMF, triumphed over one of the rulers of the world. That surely is too much honor for England. However, Maradona and many Argentines experienced the goal as just that. If you want to understand why Latin America is going left wing, look at Maradona. He incarnates Chavezian resentment. In Custurius's final scene, two musicians, one of them the great Manu Chao, stand on the street playing a song, If I were Maradona. Suddenly, Maradona is standing beside them, listening. Behind his huge sunglasses, he starts to weep. He knows how the fans feel. He's one of himself. He's one himself. The Argentine team has always belonged to him. That describes Mar Maradona. I think his great last appearance was as the coach of the Argentine na the national team at the 2010 World Cup. Not a great coach, we don't need to say much about the coach Mar Maradona, but the spectacle around him, that was just something else. This was the last time that there was such a spectacle around a single person at the World Cup. Maradona is magnetic. Having said that, it's a long video, but Maradona deserves it. Watch the movie, read about Maradona, watch footage of Mar Mar Maradona. He is one of the absolute greatest players you've ever seen. Study Mar Maradona, the good, the bad, the ugly. And with all that, Diego Armando Maradona, it is my great pleasure to introduce you into my Soccer Hall of Fame. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.